Dominic Lawton can be wild. Welcome to the Bad Movie Cult. I remember the day you told me to watch this, this film, you know. It was a good day. It started off well, and then I had to sit and watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell did you even hear about this film? This, this is uh, legendary. Welcome back, everybody, to the Bad Movie Cool <laughs> Podcast. We've got a uh, a real treat for you today. <laughs> uh, a bonus episode brought to you by Kenby Wild, who who brought this to the table. Hello. It's the 1986 Paul Dunlop in his only directing credit <laughs> film. Twin Dragon Encounter. This stars Michael and Martin McNamara as themselves. That's right. You may know them from uh, other films where they play themselves. They're not actors. I told Paul I'm not an actor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Canada's first martial arts film. Yes. We did, obviously, previously, Fatal Deviation, which was Ireland's first martial arts film. We're now moving over to Canada. If you know any other country's first martial arts films, <laughs> throw them our way. Obviously, we're fucking doing that as a thing now. <laughs> this has an IMDb rating of 4.3 out of 10 and a Rotten Tomatoes rating of 60%. <laughs> this is an audience rating. So people like me and Ken reviewing this on the Rotten Tomatoes website have given this shit show 60%. See? I told you. I told you before. I don't understand rotten tomatoes. I understand it even less now. Got the plot for you, Ken. What do you yep. reckon to this? Okay. Identical twin brothers on vacation mm -hmm. are faced with an unexpected battle when their getaway spot is invaded by mercenaries. Yes. Got a tagline for you, please. This has a tagline. <laughs> <laughs> Martial arts action explodes with double deadly force. <laughs> yep, I'm buying that. <sighs> anyway, let's fucking crack into it. Do you want to do anything you want to add? Uh, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Twin Dragon Kung Fu Club. Yes. In the middle of Ontario, Canada. Yes. We meet Martin McNamara. He's making a phone call. Uh, he's going to the beach for a run with his brother. Yep, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, and he, he stresses a couple of minutes. He's closing up the dojo for the night. Yeah, Mac, it's me, Martin. Listen, you going to go for a run? At the beach, yeah, yeah. In a couple of minutes? I'm ready to leave in a couple of minutes. You? But I mean a couple of minutes, Mick. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm leaving. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, you ready? We're locking up. Come on. He's got a pretty sweet van, and I'll give this film one thing. It's got yeah. some superb music. Yeah, it's great. He pulls up, he reads the paper. Weekend warriors terrorise cottage country. This is the same old story, no matter where you go. He reads that, Martin, and he says, I know those guys. Weekend warriors my ass. That'll be the day. Yeah, not a clue what he's talking about at this point. No. Nope. Or later. <laughs> not, <laughs> yes. not a clue what he's on about. No. 
Um, I think this was shot on like their own video recorder, wasn't it? This do they all do this themselves? And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a ridiculous credit at the end, saying that how it was made without any help whatsoever from the <laughs> Canadian film organizer and and from Ontario's film. It was like, all right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Can you what? blame them? <laughs> this fucking thing. <laughs> it just makes me laugh that they put who it was made without the help of. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he has a ruckus outside of his van anyway. Yeah, he goes all squinty and uh, squinty eyed and starts tapping his steering wheel with some nunchucks. I thought it was a couple of black puddings. <laughs> and he says, You guys have gone too far. I hope Mick's coming. Mm. <laughs> he sticks his, uh, his headlights on anyway, makes his way over to help. And we've got, we've got six blokes and they're um, attacking a girl and her dog. Yeah, yeah, this is what I say. It's just in the middle of a, a dark place. It's nowhere near the beach either. I don't know. He said he was going to be at the beach. I was in Canada. But he's not. Do you have beaches in Canada, our Canadian fans? I think they were third highest listens last month, so we have got them. Uh, fourth, I believe. Oh, I fourth. Tha- Thailand. Did your booty? <laughs> Th- Thailand jumped in. Ah. I think nice. it's uh, J.A. Sullivan. I think it's uh, that's our ma- main bulk of our Canadian listens from Ontario. How dare you refer to her as our main bulk? <laughs> <laughs> well, J.A. Sullivan, um, do you have beaches in Canada? Or is it all just polar bears and shitting in ice? I don't and, know. And syrup. Polar bears and syrup, <laughs> another great name for... Uh, get that down. Writing it down now. He, he, starts, he starts this fight by simply saying, Hey, scum! You know, because he's not messing about. Yeah. And uh, then there's a, there's a bit of a fight. The numbers game gets to him, obviously, because there's six of them, um, until he turns up. <laughs> it's, yes. It's the same person turns up again. It's his identical twin brother, Mick. Mick, Mick McNamara. <laughs> oh, my God, it's Mick McNamara, says somebody. It was <laughs> you, about, right there. Yeah, it was me, yeah. When uh, <laughs> these fights... Have, Bloody ridiculous, aren't they? Every fight in this yeah, film is ridiculous. Absolutely awful. They look awful. I like how they beat up five of them, but the one guy holds the dog hostage, not the woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to rape the woman. There's the, the, the bad guys in this like to stop as they're escaping. It's like, well, this is the perfect time to rape. And he throws her to the floor. <laughs> yeah. He, he says, You're not the law. You can't stop me. I'll break this goddamn dog's neck. Yeah. I think he says mutt. I'll break the mutt's neck. No, oh, goddamn dog's mutt. I thought you meant. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? It's <laughs> <laughs> even worse. Yeah, and I like how he's he's running. Like he, the shot is him running away, <laughs> and it cuts to the other twin who flies out of nowhere and rugby tackles the guy who's <laughs> who's holding the dog. <laughs> It's like the most violent sucker punch I've ever seen. He just runs. He doesn't even see him coming. He just runs straight into him and knocks him out. I'm sure the dog takes most of the fucking yeah, force. Yeah, the, of that. yeah. The dog's the dog's down. And pick, I thought that oh, they must be. I think they used a, a toy dog there, but it isn't. When he picks the dog up, it's an actual dog. Yeah. This guy's collapsed onto the fucking dog. I think he really is dead as well. I, I think he's really knocked him out. It doesn't look like he's done that as any sort of stunt. Yeah. He just runs straight at him, and as he's turned his head, he's punched him in the face. Uh, they return the dog anyway. Probably a new dog after that last one just had its neck snapped off <laughs> on impact. And they give her their card, and she reads it out. If you ever need us, give us a call. It's like like they're like vigilantes or something, but they're, they're not. And the opening credits hit. Fire! Fire!
dragon sound that's doing oh, this music. It sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a great song. It's um, the right to fight. Yeah, my, I've, I've written one lyric. We're going to fight for the right to fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. And, and the right to fight for the right to fight. And to I, party. <laughs> and I believe it's right to have that right. Two to, wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> that's true. We got a pre credits action sequence in a park with uh, you know, obviously the, the twin rugby tackling a man and a dog. Then a kick-ass theme song. And on top of that, we also get some text. This is like every opening to an action film oh, in one. It is brilliant. There's like um, there's a, a, a shadow training montage throughout the credits as well. Oh, yeah. I thought it was just them two. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it does cut to them two just also doing some pretty shit training. Yeah. But, yeah, there's a montage shadowing of like just people fighting. I like how it feels like they couldn't work out which one they liked more as an opening, so they did all three. <laughs> the text has nothing to do with the rest of the film. Um, it's brilliant. I've got it here. It yeah. says, Once upon a time, once upon a time, in an era that saw plastic heroes and vigilantes made famous by Hollywood, there lived a couple of men. Real men. Who knew the meaning of life? What? <laughs> <laughs> that bit, that bit got me actually. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, well, they knew the meaning of life. I like this next line. Yeah, go on, continue. They called themselves the <laughs> Twin Dragons. They call themselves. Yeah, the no one twin... else does. Yeah, yeah just them. No one else is called them Mick and Martin. And they were this country's most celebrated martial artists. Yay, twin dragons, yay. <laughs> Let's burn down the shack. <laughs> They're real men. The story begins in summer as the twins set off with their girlfriends for a nice peaceful vacation. Peaceful, that is. Until... Dot, dot, dot. And then it, it, there isn't an until. We, we cut to them... Not, Jumping yeah, jacks. Not, not even going on this vacation yeah. yet. Yeah, it doesn't even start from that moment on. That should usually cut to the bad guys doing something. So, you know, okay, these are the guys that... Do you, that, do you know what the dot, 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 do you know what that's called? Uh, no. An ellipsis. Oh, nice. Thank you. Facts. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. It's a literary fact. There you go. Yeah, they're doing jumping jacks. They've got like a... It's in like some sort of gym hall. Like I'm guessing it's their dojo. It is pretty rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing's fucking rubbish. Yeah, yeah. All of their training is pretty awful. To tick another thing off, we get a training montage. They're training their girlfriends as well at this point. (laughs) There's one bit. There's there's a guy who's uh, planking, I believe it's known as, while somebody else just kicks him in the stomach. (laughs) That's training. And then it quickly... We do that before each recording episode. (laughs) Yeah, and then I return the favour by uh, slamming a medicine ball straight into Dom's stomach. (laughs) (laughs) Repeatedly, again and again and again and again and again and again and again. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, you'd pay for that training, wouldn't you? (laughs) You would, yeah. Seems pleasurable. Uh, After what seems like a fucking eternity, we hit the road with the girlfriends. I like how they have twin vans as well. Oh, they've got these same fucking vans. They've got big logos on their vans. Twin dragons, kung fu. And uh, yeah, they've both got the same van. As well as both looking exactly the same. It's like, should, what, should, else, what else do you two need to be more like twins? Should we talk about how these two twins look? I don't think we've mentioned it yet. <laughs> we haven't actually, no. They're kind of, they're muscly, but also small. <laughs> Yeah, and that's just their bodies. Obviously, if you want to talk about what they look like, um, for the British fans, it would perhaps be the Chuckle Brothers. Yeah. Would be their most likely (laughs) counterparts. I've also saw someone describe them as Rod and Todd Flanders grown up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, perhaps, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit they're, like... They're um, kind of geeky, in-shape, martial artist-looking guys, aren't yeah, they? And a, quite old-looking. A bit like a, like a really small uh, Tom Selleck. Yes. Both of them, exactly the same, though. A small, muscular Tom Selleck. How about that, ladies? Yeah. How about that, J.A. <laughs> Sullivan? <laughs> hey, she, she's a big contributor to this. Don't go alien. What, to the film? <laughs> 
Was this you? Was this you behind this? No. Oh. Anyway, yes, yeah, so that's what they look like. And they say they look kind of like 40, or don't they, at this point? They're, yeah. they're not young. They've got yeah. young girlfriends, but they look in their 40s. Anyway, enough of that. Back onto the best scene of the film. This is the best scene, and it's like five minutes in. <laughs> this is where they stop off immediately after setting out for, yeah. their, for their trip, and uh, they go to a diner. Yeah, they seem to know the owner because they invite them. They invite her to join them on their vacation. She declined, saying they're too wild and rugged for her. She might never make it back. <laughs> yeah, even though the girlfriends are sat right there, so I don't know what she's expecting to happen. Yeah, probably she, just kill her and eat her. Yeah, she also uh, puts them in hot water by saying that you're always bringing different girls up here, and it, <laughs> yeah, which is nice of her. At that point, it becomes very obvious that it was actually these two that wrote the film because <laughs> they've done nothing but compliment themselves on how you know, like amazing they are. Yeah, there's more of that later. Uh, they all order coffee until some guy on the table opposite pipes up with... Hey, give the little boys milk and cookies. Hey, guys. Cool it. Yeah. <laughs> That's like I was watching it again. Give the little boys milk and cookies. Oh, yes. It's truckers. There's some truckers in there. Yeah. I like his response. It's, hey, guys, cool it. Yeah, they don't want any trouble. These two. Yeah, well, hillbilly fuck joins in. Hey, you better drink your milk and cookies, boys, so you grow up nice and strong. <laughs> <laughs> it's very clever. It's like, these guys are old enough to be your dads. And it's the morning, isn't it? And they just set out. Yeah. Yeah, so why why do these truckers want to have fights? Anyway, one of the twins responds, Hey, the guy that looks like a Mack truck, shut your mouth. And my favourite line of the film, (laughs) Hey, you apologise for calling me a Mack truck. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I believe he follows it with, I drive a Mack truck. I don't even know what a fucking Mack truck is. I've got no idea what they're talking about at this point. It's a truck with a big, long, like, Colombo coat on, isn't it? (laughs) He says, I drive a Mack truck. Maybe I'll drive you. (laughs) Yeah, classic. (laughs) Oh, what a comeback. Yeah, imagine that. He goes, go on then. He's like, yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? (laughs) What if he said, go on then? What's he going to do? He'd be like, what? But he... What do you mean? Roger him senseless, Kenneth. <laughs> is that what he means? Is that what driving somebody is? Raping? I hope not. Or else driving not... Miss Daisy's a fucked up <laughs> film, isn't it? <laughs> Morgan Freeman, that is, that's his most predatory. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that looks like a Mack truck. Shut your mouth. Hey, you. Apologize for calling me a Mack truck. I drive a Mack truck. Maybe I'll drive you. Sure, I apologize, Mr. Mack Truck. Apologize properly. Sorry, jackass. They all stare at each other a bit before calmly walking outside, yeah. and we get a slow mo fight. It's a very slow mo fight. Most of the fights are slow mo in this, no? Uh, anything, even dialogue, was considered for slow mo in this, <laughs> it seems, because they do start speaking to the girlfriends after they beat up these two guys. And that is in slow mo, so you can't hear what they say. It's a, it's a very short film, anyway, isn't it? It's only it was like it? Uh, eighty minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like between seventy and eighty minutes, and it's still very padded. Uh, the owner comes out with her arms folded, and one of the twins hits us with the line. Confucius say, when fighting truckers, nail the suckers. <laughs> Cut to the People's Private Army boat with a load of extras from Troma films on it. Yeah. And also the Nasty Boys from the WWF. Oh, uh, yeah. I've written it looks like uh, John Lydon from the Sex I've, Pistols. I've written Johnny Rotten, yeah, yeah. The, the main man. Yeah. Yeah. I put Johnny Rotten seems to be the leader and he's staring at the twins who are dicking about with their bags on the docks. I actually thought one of the twins was in the gang because there's a guy. Yeah, I wrote a, that as well. Yeah. In a camo tank top. He looks just like him. I mean, yeah. are they also playing extras as well as yeah. the two mates? I've got it's John Lydon, a moustache. Two kids and a mohawk. Yeah. That's the gang. John Lyon and the mohawk look like the nasty boys from the WWE. Yeah, yeah. they also look like they could probably have a fight. Yeah. Yeah, everybody else doesn't. Uh, Anyway, Johnny Rotten, he continues the trend of calling them children by asking, aren't you supposed to be in school? (laughs) 
It's like they could, they're fucking 40 years old, these what two. Is, what is it about, like, the good guys in these films where people think, I'm going to go and take the piss out of them? Don't class this film along those <laughs> films, oh, right, Ken. Okay. All right, then. In that case, they've got a van that says Twin Dragons Kung Fu. So why would he think, I'm going to go and take the piss out of these Kung Fu experts? I mean, you would if you saw that and these two. Look fucking <laughs> ridiculous, these two. It's the Twin Dragons. <laughs> The most celebrated martial artist in Canada. In the world. Fuck. Hey, boys. Aren't you little kiddies supposed to be in school? <laughs> what do you think, boys? Are they twins or is one just a reflection? Forget it, Mick. We're on holidays. Let it go. Oh, the Bobsy twins don't want to play. Not today. Stay out of our way and we'll stay to yours. Don't bet on it. Uh, anyway, Johnny Rotten isn't actually sure if the twi- if they are twins or they're just a reflection. You ever had that problem, Ken? <laughs> yeah, many times. Thought so. Yeah, I used to date twins. Turns out it was just a reflection. It was just, just one of them. One in a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was me. Anyway, the gang follows the girlfriends up the pier for some reason and Johnny Rotten grabs one of them on the arse. Uh, she turns around, hits him and knocks him out instantly. <laughs> We get more slow-mo as the twins attack the rest of the gang. Um, The girls literally beat the leader up, two on one. And uh, she says, maybe in the future you'll learn to keep those filthy hands to yourself. And uh, he ends up just front kicking her out of shot. It kicks her straight in the stomach. Right in the (laughs) breadbasket. Yeah, good. Because she didn't need to do that. No. You know, maybe he's learnt his lesson. But that, that kind of like talk, yeah, so kicks her straight out and pulls a machete. Yeah, that bends when he does that. It's yeah. very real. Yeah. Goes for the twins. More slow-mo. They double-team him with a leg sweep and kick-to-the-face combo. Finish him with a mounted punch. And uh, to be honest, I thought, like, okay, that's enough beating up random people that can't fucking fight. It turns out these are the main fucking bad guys. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. These are the um, weekend. weekend warriors. This is ridiculous. These are like, you know, like Terminator when he turns up and like with the one that's got like Bill Paxton, you know, that group. Yeah. And he just fucking beats them up instantly. I thought that was these boys. No. No, these are the main bad guys. Johnny Rotten's the main bad guy in this. Damn right. It's ridiculous. We get some backstory on the gang anyway. The leader is, Johnny Rotten is called Jake. And uh, anyway, they're on the way up to the family holiday spot. They come up there every year um, to cause trouble, Jake's gang. They play army, then vanish, so the police can never find them. You okay, Tessa? Yeah, I'm okay. I must admit that creep shook me up for a while, but I'm okay now. Who are they? The lead guy's name is Jake. He brings up his yahoos every summer to play army. They give some of the codgers up here a rough time. Well, why hasn't somebody done something about them? They tried once. What happened? They just disappeared, vanished. No one could prove anything. Uh, we see Jake. He's staring at them as they sail away on the boat. And uh, he looks like he's got a bit of dog shit in his mouth there. What's that? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it's a very small cigar. But he does say, I'll get you bastards. So there you go. You know it's not finished. I was hoping it was finished, but no. <laughs> uh, they've got quite the weekend planned, as it turns out. There's a bit of sun tanning, a bit of cliff diving, a bit of nature hiking. Yeah, it says, um, so where's the, what does he say? Where's the chalet Beef. or something? Oh. And he says, it's not a chalet, it's a cabin, you twat. Yeah. We built it ourselves, there's no running water or electricity. There is bunk beds. Yeah. <laughs> However, I don't know why the hell we built bunk beds, but there you go. Can we turn our beds into bunk beds? All right, we've already figured out how to do this. The beds match up perfectly. And here's the thing, it'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. Yeah, and it says, welcome to Twin Island. Which is nice of them to call it themselves. Yeah, the one island yeah. called Twin Island. Yeah, well done. Uh, the girlfriend says, I, I'd like to do some pictures. Going to see any wildlife? And one of the twins says, yeah, there's two big horny wolves on the island. And uh, the other girlfriend says, yeah, they're called Mick and Marin. <laughs> and the other twin just uh... carries the joke on for too long and says, oh, they're quite tame, you know, you just have to be kind to them. Yeah, and occasionally touch their dicks. The cabin has got a Twin Dragons Kung Fu logo on the wall. (laughs) Which is a beautiful touch. We cut back to the gang in their little boat and Jake's sitting at the front. uh, I guess in hot pursuit. 
I just can't believe this is the bad guy in the fucking movie. <laughs> That's the entire plot. Oh, my this God. This is the plot. Uh, anyway, they anchor up the fucking twins. They take a picture. The, then the twins tackle the girl into the water. Um, honestly, like, two-thirds of this movie is sort of like watching... Uh, yeah, people on holiday. People on holiday. Yeah, doing nothing at all. And, uh, yeah... Okay, so, so we let, let's cut straight to the next bit of action, which is out on the water. We got Jake looking through binoculars at them. He's always watching. That's the thing, like all the way through the, the fun. Yeah, he, do, he, do, he does watch a lot of fun, but doesn't have any fun himself. What a shame. It looks like, looks like sad, someone's sad story. And it looks like someone's done that trick where you blacken the rims of the <laughs> yeah, binoculars. I thought that, yeah. <laughs> he took them off and he's got shit on his face. Yeah, he's, he's got a load of black makeup on his face. Uh, they have breakfast, that's ready at the cabin, but the girls wanted it in bed, and the, the twin says, oh, they'll get it in bed, but it won't be breakfast. <laughs> you horny old wolves. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they should have called this film. <laughs> anyway, yeah, as Ken says, they're paddling the next day, uh, and the girls are just so grateful to bring them, for bringing them out into the country. These girls are so fucking grateful to have these as boyfriends, aren't they, these fucking girls? Yeah, these two middle-aged, mustachioed men. And as they're canoeing, the evil gang are also <laughs> <laughs> canoeing. What are the chances of that? In two canoes, these. And they, they pull up like in between them, because like, the, the, one twin's with his girlfriend, the one's with his girlfriend, and then they like row in between them. And Jake says uh, something to one of the girls, and I couldn't actually hear what he says. And he, uh, she spits in his face. Yeah, it's not nice. Calls him a pig. Oh, that's even worse. And he responds by punching her right in the face. <laughs> yeah, I quite like that. But... <laughs> one of the twins pulls out Rambo's fucking bow. Yeah, yeah, he's got a full bow and arrow on him, hasn't he? Yeah. Aims it at him and telling him to pick on someone your own size. And Jake's actually fucking massive. He's not muscular or anything, but he's fucking yeah, tall. Yeah, he's just a big, a big fella. Uh, the gang all pull guns on uh, on the twin. Yeah, it turns out that uh, bow and arrow loses to numerous rifles. Yeah, and Jake smashes him in the face with the butt of his rifle. Yeah, sorted. Uh, threatens to rape the women, and they all paddle off laughing. Yeah, and says, see you later. We'll be seeing you. Uh, amazing holiday so far. Yeah, still off they go. I've, I've got to do a bit of fishing. <laughs> yeah, not sure I'd stay, to be honest, but they decide to. We see him chilling at the waterfall, some fishing, uh, more being spied on at the cabin's jetty. We found out they've been there for three day, uh, four days so far with three to go. Yeah, which it seems like that's a lot of days they've already been there. It is to be secluded in a fucking well, cabin. It is also for nothing of having happened. Yeah. Four days already. There's a lot more that happens like from now on that you'd think maybe they'd been there two days and there was five days left or something. Yeah. But to give us only three days left and then all of this to happen afterwards, every, everything's fucking morning. Yeah. Every, every scene we have is them waking up. Yeah. So how the hell is that only seven days? Every time we see them, like the cabin, there's, there's another bit later on where they, they're waking up again in the morning. It's, it's just like the, morning, 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 morning. All the fucking time, it's just the morning. They hear a gunshot off into the woods and they assume poachers. As why would anyone be up there this time of year with a rifle? I know who it is. Who is it? It's bloody Brad, isn't it? Who's Brad? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But it is. I like this. Like, who the hell will be up here with a rifle? It's like maybe the guy that just hit you in the face three days <laughs> yeah. ago or whatever, it, whenever with, it was. With a rifle. And then they mentioned Barefoot Grant. Grant? I thought it was Brad. Yeah, uh, Grant. I had to check the IMDb. Son of a bitch. He's a mountain man who never bathes or wears shoes. And the twins decided it'd be fun to take their girlfriends to go and meet him. <laughs> yeah, that does sound nice. Yeah. And one of them says, this guy knows more about the bush than any guy he's ever met. <laughs> it's kind of like Ken B. Wild, yeah, this man says. Say, yeah, yeah, some people have said that about me. <laughs> so maybe maybe don't take your girlfriends up to me. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, they don't take them anyway. They just say, stay close to the fire. We'll be gone for fuck knows how long. We're just going somewhere. Exactly. You stay out in the wilderness at night while says someone who's literally said he's going to rape you. <laughs> Yeah, you we're, stay out. We're going to go and see some bloke who never bathes. <laughs> yeah, for reasons we because because we set up loads of um, what is it they say? 
We've set up loads of feeding stations for the deer yeah. on this island. Yeah, that we've just got to. Surely no one knows our feeding station location, says one of them. It's like... Only Barefoot Grant. He's got two little, like, helpers or something. Like apprentices. Yeah. But they say, they say, let's go and take care of them and then have some fun. And they beat the shit out of these yeah. two guys. What the fuck are you doing? And why does why does a homeless person that never bathes or wears shoes have apprentices? Yeah. And for what? You're aiming your sights are low there, aren't a- you? If apprentices... You're a- of what? Because maybe one day, with enough training, they could also be homeless with no <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Barefoot Grand Lee looks to be sleeping when they go over to him. He and seems it, yeah. They pretend to be poachers and they ask who the island belongs to. And he replies, Why, Mick and Marty McNamara, the toughest guys in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you think... You wrote this, did you? Yeah. You son of a bitch. Yeah. He, they start laughing and give away that it's actually them, and he calls them silly buggers because they're Canadian and they do have occasional British uh, slang, don't they? Quite right, too. Speaking of high jinks, we cut to the girlfriends and they're just at the camp and they're singing. It's a beautiful song, isn't it? Beautiful harmonies they've got going on. Uh, the twins, they've had so much fun beating up homeless people and scaring clearly mentally challenged men that they decide... Wouldn't it be fun to terrorise... Yeah, the girls that are under constant threat of rape. Yeah. Yeah, let's make them scared. So here's the plan, Ken. They throw some... St- and he's like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Or something like that, they say. They throw some sticks into the woods to spook them. They start doing wolf howls. Mm. And then a real wolf <laughs> howls back. Yeah. And then the dialogue... <laughs> the dialogue's like, how about that? Wasn't that fantastic? And the other one says... Well, what a beautiful sound. <laughs> it's like, have you forgotten what you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> no, they're right, though. It is a beautiful sound. The girlfriends, they grab an axe. They're scared. And uh, for some reason, they decide to strip off into their undies and swim into the lake and run out roaring at them like they're wolves, I guess. Yeah, rampant. Rampant wolves. Why swim into the lake? Why not just run through the bushes? They just like being in their little briefs. It happens later, doesn't it, where (laughs) inexplicably they strip down to their briefs again. It's time for a fight. You'd better be in your pants. (laughs) (laughs) That's the motto of this podcast. (laughs) The girlfriend's there mad, and uh, the twin says, It's just us two horny wolves. trying to do hey, just us two horny wolves hey i brought you a present great a knife what am i supposed to do with this clean fish it's protection in case you're attacked by wolves <laughs> <laughs> oh my near regular riot uh, more sunbathing the next day. They're not happy. Uh, they're yeah, still mad. See, it's morning again. See, mm-hmm. it's another morning that they've had. It's about the eighth one since they got there for three days. They apologise with breakfast and the girls instantly forgive them. Uh, we cut to them soaring a tree log in half. The <laughs> they're twins. very close, aren't they? They're very close. It's like one, it's a one-man saw and they're both at the either end of it. Yeah. <laughs> Both in the same, like, jean shorts, yeah. no top. I think it'd be great if they were going, to me, to yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd have been brilliant if they were doing all that. Uh, the girls want to go swimming, but they're like, no, we've got work to do. You've got to have to go alone on your own. Don't get raped or whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try not to anyway. Yeah, it looks like the bad guys have got a training camp in the woods as yeah, well. Yeah, there's more of them now. It's more yeah. than just five of them. Montage of them training. Uh, montage of the twins doing chores. Jake laughing like a twat. And uh, time to check in on the girls. They're, they're impressed by how much wood the twins have. Yeah, look at all that wood they've chopped. Then there is a fucking ridiculous amount. It is. More than they'll ever need. If they only go up there once a year, what's the point of all that now? Yeah, and if that gets like wet through yeah, the winter, say, yeah. if, if it rains, you might as well just... So get rid of it again. It's rot. What's Bloody up? idiots. <laughs> and the twins say that they're, the girls are getting a surprise in a couple of hours. And then they all jump in the lake for a swim. 
This is literally like watching someone's home fucking movie. Yeah, it is very, very dull. Uh, they're off for a walk anyway. They've brought their guns with them. They're packing their... What do they call them? Um, equalizers. The equalizers, yeah. They, it says uh, well, it'll be dark soon. So it's like, well, yeah, actually, you're right. Why don't we just go earlier instead of chopping all this fucking wood? <laughs> yeah. Still, off, off they go. I wonder what the adventures they've got in store. They've they've talked about this surprise since the start of the film. Yeah, it's very very poor. It's a treehouse. Yeah. In in terms of a surprise, if you were to take somebody away for a, a surprise, and this was it, they'd be like, "What the fuck is this?" Here's relationship advice from Ken, and he's fucking right. <laughs> if you build up a surprise for your girlfriend, and it's a fucking treehouse in the middle of the woods. You ain't going to be happy. Yeah, it's just like a a hide. I, I believe it's known as a hunter's hide. Yeah. Where they're just going to sit upstairs and like just look at shit. And it's a bear. There's an actual bear that comes walking through. What a treat. The girls are fucking terrified. Yeah. Bears can climb trees, can't they? They can, yeah, especially if there's a fucking ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Which they've climbed. Yeah, yeah but, uh, you know, whatever. It trees them anyway. They end up having to stay there all night on the fucking floor until it leaves. They did actually say, so, oh, it's a bit cramped in there. It says, you know, welcome to the sardine convention. Uh, and they don't have conventions. What are you talking about? That would take, like, planning and all kinds of things. Sardines are just, like, idiot fish. You fucking idiot. Yeah, you idiots. Yeah, you bloody lunatic. You, you don't bloody... know anything about the sardine community. Conventions. I'm glad Ken's so angry at this because it needs it's not mentioned enough in podcasts. <laughs> well, I wrote it down. Sardine yeah. convention, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that got me the most angry in this entire film. The rest of it thought it was brilliant. Yeah. They end up they end up spending the night on the floor until the bear fucks off. So what an amazing treat <laughs> for the girls. He said that was a night you never forget. It was like you fucking fell asleep. You slept through the whole thing. That was just literally a night sleeping in a tree. Why would you never forget that? They didn't see anything. They saw a bear, got scared, went to sleep. We're 40 minutes into a 73-minute film, <laughs> and finally we get some action with the actual bear turns up in front of them. And the twins are like literally standing, like the actors are actually standing in front of a bear. There is no way they've got a bear handler to no, do this scene. Now, it actually does look like they were shit scared when they came over the top of that hill, didn't they? It was like, whoa! Yeah. Because <laughs> I think they thought, oh, fucking hell, it's still here. Yeah. The actual bear is, I mean, it's like a baby bear. It's not like a full grown fucking <clears throat> bear, I don't think. But surely the, the adult bear is around at some point. Unless, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a fucking expert on bears. Who do you think I am? Are oh, you not? Bear Grylls. <laughs> yeah, Clint Howard. He was <laughs> Gentle Ben. Oh, yeah, that's he true. Know, he knows how to tame a bear. Where, some is think, he, where is he when you need him? So I'm thinking, oh, at least we were going to have some fucking twin on bear action, which was one of Ken's films. Uh, <laughs> but no, it just fucking cuts away. As soon as something interesting happens, oh, it's gone. We go back to the cabin, one's having a shower, the girlfriend, the other one goes for yeah. a shit. Yeah, that's true. Although I'm not entirely sure it's confirmed. Well, she never gets to have the shit, yeah, does she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... She has to uh, <laughs> cork it back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, well, maybe she does because Jake in his mouth. <laughs> anyway. It's his cigar. 43 minutes into the film, the girls get kidnapped. Not this time, cutie. I'm wise to that move. Twins have good taste. Now the war games begin. Losers die. Winners take all. Let's go. Uh, cut to the twins and their canoe. They're coming back. They think the girls are playing a trick on them. So yeah, they... yeah, where the hell are they? They've been fishing. Fishing, yeah. Yeah, so they've got up early, gone fishing. They head off to uh, clean the fish they've caught. Meanwhile, Jake, he's raiding his men for the twins to come and rescue the girls. He says, kill first, ask questions later. Yeah, they'll come for us. We just need to be ready. Some geek says, when we kill the twins, what do we do with the broads? Jake says, we're all going to be very nice to the ladies. And after we're tied with them, they too will have the most unfortunate accident. Oh, dear, oh dear. 
the nicer they are to us, the longer they'll live. Okay. Well, at least they know this. Yeah. Unless he's saying it in front of them. He then makes them look at a poster that he's taken from the cabin. <laughs> They've got a poster of themselves <laughs> in their own cabin. <laughs> yeah. I want one of me um, in my house. <laughs> of us two. <laughs> just... In karate pose. Oh, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, Captain Crease. <laughs> yeah, they're in full action mode, aren't they? All fucking limbered up, all lubed up. And uh, he uh, he gives a karate kick to the poster. That'll show him. Yeah, people hate that with posters. Um, he says to them, next time you see them, they'll be dead. Anyway, cut to the twins. They've got their fish. They still think nothing's fucking wrong. <laughs> They're, they're, they're going to wait until dark to go looking for the girls, which seems like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> and then one of them spots a cigar on the floor. <gasps> Say what? And they're like, hey, doesn't Jake smoke cigars? Doesn't Jake smoke small pieces of shit just like that? <laughs> <laughs> they check the cabin, dramatic music hits, because they find out our poster's gone. <laughs> Soldier Jake smoke these things. Check the cabin. Our poster's gone. Must be the soldiers. Damn it, you know what they might do to the girls? Yeah, I can imagine, but it's us they want. Bastards. They aren't waiting for hunting season either. We better get the girls before those creeps do a number on them. Look, they'll be waiting for us, Martin. There's only one way in, up the river. Let's surprise the hell out of them. We'll hit and run until we're sure we can get the girls out safely. Look, there's an old logging room. We'll load up the three wheelers. Take us about a mile from their camp, and we can cut through the bush. Let's do it. That only means one thing. The girls have been kidnapped and will be subjected to mindless and repeated rape until we get there, and then they will kill us. And, and, uh, actually, maybe it's just fallen off. Maybe you just have a look. Is it, is it falling off the wall, the poster? Is it just on the ground? My God, no. It actually is gone. Must be the soldier. Shit. Then exactly what I was saying previously then. Oh, my God. I'm glad we've waited so long. <laughs> until. <laughs> if only we'd gone when we first arrived. <laughs> Instead of waiting eight hours as a joke. <laughs> they hatch a plan. They already know where Jake's camp is. So, you know, great. <laughs> <laughs> so that made the plan a lot quicker to hatch. They put on camo. They put on headbands. Yes, they do. It's a good look. They've got their bows. Uh, they're loading their arrows with non-lethal arrowheads. Yeah, it's like like rubber yeah, arrows flat, or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know the ones that like stick to you, like you have yeah. as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> like the suction cups at the end. When you take them off. Why are you on it? Another laugh out loud moment. <laughs> Coming up right now. <laughs> to be honest, Ken, I don't know about you, but I expected them to use uh, a trike each. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been good. <laughs> they they peel off some camo, um, and there's a small trike that they've got a three wheeler motorbike that they both sit on. <laughs> One of them's in the back. <laughs> You can't even see him as as they're riding through places. You don't even know he's still on it. (laughs) But the the shots, they've got the music playing and they're going so slow, like round corners. They go through like the river at one point and fuck me, it looks bad. Yeah, through water, which looks unnecessary as well as they go into water, then come back out of the water. It's like they don't realise how deep that water is when they get into it. It's like, oh shit. Uh, they go through a field, which I think is like higher than they believed as well, because you still can't see the guy on the back. There's one really far shot away from them, where they just like go to the top of the hill and then go back <laughs> down. It's like, what the fuck are we watching here? <laughs> it's like whenever there's like, um... <laughs> it's like. 
Oh, I'm just remembering it. It's yeah. fucking funny. It's like really far away. They, they're driving up a hill and then turn and just drive <laughs> back down it. And they just didn't, like, forgot to cut. <laughs> Alley up. But yeah, it's like whenever they have, like, transport that they've obviously rented for the film, they're like, we're going to put as much of this in as we can. <laughs> then this just looks fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It'd been great if they were both on one. That would have looked like heroic and cool. This yeah. just looks fucking ridiculous. Yeah, give him a piggyback. And yeah. the, the one on the back looks like he's shitting himself yeah. whatever, because the other one's driving. Oh, it is funny. Anyway, we, there's a trainer for the bad guys, and we watch him beat up three guys at once yeah, in the who camp. Who the fuck is this guy now? I, I thought that was like some old bloke. He's really old. Yeah, some old guy turns up and he starts like training the army people for something. But they try and mask it with like a hat and big sunglasses. But you can tell he's fucking old by the way he moves yeah. and he's trying to beat these guys up. He's probably like the sensei of the McNamara twins in real life or some shit. Uh, three guys, they're, they're sent off to go and, you know, have a look round. They're taken out by the twins. The first one's hit with a non-lethal arrow, who then slow-mo kicks. Anytime there's action, it's slow motion. Imagine what this fucking film, the action sequences, will look like. Normal speed. You can see at one point that he's nowhere near kicking him in the face because of the angle that they do the slow motion, you can see. And in fact, the second guy gets taken out in, in normal speed with a knee and that looks shit. And the third one's taken out with a dance, followed by a roundhouse, round the house <laughs> kick. Yeah, I've written hop, skip, and a kick. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. does though, doesn't he? I should have called the film that. <laughs> he does. He just sort of like hops. He does a little skip around and then just kicks him, while the bloke's just stood still with a gun pointing at him, thinking, "Well, I better not fire it." Yeah. Even though my instructions are to kill these two. <laughs> yeah. More music playing. The twins have strung up the three guards. And they find out... The yeah, g- yeah, they're upside down like they're in Predator or something. Yeah. They? How the hell have they hoisted these three guys up? We get a prolonged shot of them cutting through a tiny net with a pen knife next. Yeah. Like, it looks blatantly obvious that that net stretches as far as the camera goes. <laughs> <laughs> and they take ages to fucking like cut through this net. They get through, they're at Jake's camp. They start shooting empty bottles, pots yeah, and yeah, pans. Yeah, they're just firing guns at pretty much nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, upending tables and chairs. They set fire to a tent. Yeah, that'll teach them. Jake's army, they, they hear the gunshots and they realise that, oh, in fact, they didn't come down the river like they thought. So the whole army went to sit by the <laughs> river and left their camp totally unguarded. Yeah, he says, looks like your boyfriend's just signed their death warrant, even though he already disgust that they are going to be killed. I like Jake's plan here is to approach the camp slowly, circle around it, and then move in in a pincer movement, which, if they all start shooting at the same time, will more than likely kill each other than the twins. (laughs) Well, that's the plan he's going with. Who aren't still there anyway. Yeah. We've got two guards. They're taking the piss out of the ones hanging up because they find them, and then they get attacked and, and put down. Quite right. Jake's back at the camp. He surveys the carnage of the campsite. He's not happy. I mean, probably. I mean, he only has one facial expression in the whole film, and this is it. Yeah. He gets he gets on the uh, the the radio and just says uh, he, he calls it's his pretty people. Cool. <laughs> he, he calls his people and uh, scout one, to scout two. Yeah. But who is it? It's either Michael or Martin. We're not sure which McNamara it is that says something like they're dead or I don't know. he says they're all tied up at the moment oh of course he does he gives us the one liner and uh, I like Jake seemingly forgetting what the hell he's up to says who the hell is this <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea who it is <laughs> I like the girlfriend's reaction she says ha who surprised whom uh, she says whom yeah, yeah she does yes I like the way she pronounced the word whom I like his response which is as long as we've got you will get them, and then punches her again in the face. This is the second time this girlfriend's been punched in the face by Jake. Well, maybe she should just shut the fuck up, yeah, Maybe, eh? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Scout one, scout two, come in. They're all tied up at the moment. Is there any message? Who the hell is this? Where are my men? We got them, and we'll keep them hanging around until we get the girls back unharmed. No deal, Sonny. Keep the men. Come and get the broads. I dare you. Okay, but stay awake. I wouldn't want you to die in your sleep. Who surprised whom? 
As long as we've got you, we'll get them. I like it when you fight back. After we're through with the twins, remind me to slap you around some more. Uh, we get more great music watching yeah, the twins. Here it comes again. Around. Yeah, music. Yo. Watching the twins run around in the woods. There's some dweeb using a mirror to signal, I think. <laughs> yeah, which they swim for about 20 minutes to go and find him. Because yeah. they're, 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 they're fucking miles away watching this mirror thing. They strip down to their trunks again. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's like they're, they're a long way away and they see this mirror flashing. And I thought, oh, who's this? Maybe it's Barefoot Grant. But no, it's not. No, it's a bloke who's got a fucking massive mirror attached to his belt. Yeah. Because we see it later. It's not even a small little mirror. It's a full-length mirror. <laughs> Six foot. It's a wardrobe door <laughs> that he's got. <laughs> that he's flashing across the water. No, but they, they dive in and swim for what looks like a, a good 15 minutes distance. Yeah. Still. Then- yeah. Jump out pretending to be wolves again. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. They just kill the guy. He's sitting on a rock for some reason. Uh, we get a nasty boys guy with the mohawk. He's waiting around the corner with a knife. Yeah. He actually manages to knock a twin down. The only fucking bad guy in this film that even gets close to fucking yeah. attacking these twins. I, I did think that, actually, when we first saw the bad guys. I actually thought at least he looks a bit hard. Yeah. He looks like he's... The like, only one. Yeah. Everyone else looks like children. Yeah, he looks like he could actually fight. He knocks one of the twins down, but then he's instantly disarmed and knocked out by the other twin. Anytime a twin looks like he could be potentially surprised by an attack, the other one just turns up straight away and kills him. Why did they think it was a good idea to roam the woods in trunks and no shoes? <laughs> Who do they think they are? Barefoot Grant. Because <laughs> <laughs> one of the guards catches one of them trying to sneak past. Pulls the rifle on him, tells him to come over. I don't know why he's not just killing him, because they've been given the kill signal, was the order. Yeah, shoot yeah. first, ask questions later. But he gives him enough time for the other one to, again, the twin to come up behind him, kick him in the bollocks, KO him. Yeah, there's a proper kick as well in the bollocks, that was, wasn't it? Yeah. They, Fr- from the bollocks point of view. <laughs> they dive into the water, they back across the river. Yeah, swimming off again for about 15 minutes. They've made enough noise, but luckily this is the worst evil gang in any film ever, <laughs> including Samurai Cop, where they all got blown up in a car park by their own boss. The same boss who spends most of the time dressed as a doctor hiding in a bin. <laughs> They speak to Jake again on the radio, telling him that the three more of his men are down. They say eight down, 12 to go. Yeah, they keep count from now on, which is irritating. Yeah. It also irritated me is that they were actually got more, like, loads more to go, more than we've actually seen before. So I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> the twins say, nothing will happen to your men as long as the girls are safe. Jake opens a beer bottle with his teeth. Yeah. And he says that these guys are going far enough, and then he sends the elderly trainer after them. That will stop them. <laughs> yeah. And thankfully, they managed to stealth hide a hovercraft for just such an occasion. <laughs> They've got a fucking hovercraft as well. <laughs> under, Why have they been keeping under some that? camo? Why would they have that? They've just got camo nets hiding vehicles. Lots of shots of it driving along the river. And we get the first shots at the twins from the bad guys 10 minutes before the end of the film. This yeah. is the first time they Suddenly open fire. Suddenly it's like just open warfare, isn't it? Now yeah. Where there's like smoke bombs, just machine guns. Yeah, well, I thought they were using 18th century muskets because the amount of smoke. It turns out that... <laughs> yeah, was, I, I thought that. I thought, where's all that come from? Yeah, it turns out that it was a smoke bomb thrown, but we never see it thrown No, no, we, we, we see it on the floor after all the smoke. Yeah. As if that, that explains that, okay? Sorry, sorry for not showing you that before. We see a guy, he's putting gunpowder in a barrel, dropping a ball bearing in. <laughs> There's a cannon being loaded in the background. <laughs> One guy's dying of scurvy or whatever the fuck's going on. Yeah, they all cough anyway, the bad guys, and they all end up trudging off up the riverbank. Two more men taken out. He asks one how old he is. He says 17. He says, can you swim? Then get out of here. And the kid runs off, starts swimming across the river. Yeah, the answer was no. So he drowns, um, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just he gets into a little bit of trouble. But uh, the McNamara's are busy. So he just he just like, sinks with his hand up like, like uh, Terminator 2. 
Gives a thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> as, he, as he sadly dies. Uh, nine to go after they find a guy face down on the floor with no explanation on what the fuck happened <laughs> yeah, to this we're guy. Yeah, we just count him as dead. Yeah, well done. Well done, us. Uh, Jake has a good idea, though. Let's split up. Let not, let's not make it easy for them, he says, after th- half of his fucking team have been taken <laughs> out without even the twins breaking a sweat. Even <laughs> then... Not, they're not even dressed. Yeah. They're even beaten up by people in their underpants. <laughs> and even then, it's only two guys that split up with one of the girlfriends anyway. The rest of them all trudge off with Jake. And the blonde girlfriend, because she, she trudges off with the two of them, she thinks back to the training from the start of the film. Well, that, that's because, as you mentioned earlier, they decide... Well, now that we're walking off, maybe some rape. Yes. Let, let's have a. Let's just stop a while and have some rape. Mm. Yeah, I'll go first. Is in fact even a bit of dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, but then she uh, she does she flashbacks to some terrible and shit training from earlier. Yeah, when we were talking about the montage training from the beginning of the film, it was this. It was one of the twins telling this her how to fight hurt. off. No. And she ends up KOing the two guards. Which would not hurt at all. <laughs> uh, back to the other girlfriend. She has an apple on her head. <laughs> yeah, if you thought that was shit, wait till you see this old guy with it, his nunchucks. I was going to say, remember the elderly guy that Jake sent after the twins? Well, he's back with them now. He's obviously he couldn't find them. <laughs> he's like, fuck knows where they are. He's got, he's got his nunchucks out and he <laughs> takes forever to hit this apple off the head of the girl. Yeah, I think it's just specifically to show us that he can use nunchucks. Yeah. She's sat there just terrified whilst there's an apple just sat on her head. I, I actually thought she was going to get hit in the face about three or four times before it, probably did it happen. didn't happen. It probably did happen in the, the outtakes. <laughs> I was toying with the notion this guy was blind, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with his big sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah, he's like um, King Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. It turns out the two twins and the other girlfriend, they've managed to... To beat them to the camp yeah, and they hide managed in the to tent. converge somehow. Yeah? I yeah. don't know how she found them or they found her, but they're, and, and all also, three of them are there now. They all went in the opposite directions and they've beaten them to the camp. Uh, they all throw their guns down because they point guns at them from the tent. And the girlfriend said that she wasn't sure she'd even see the light of day again. Never mind you two twats. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which which is countered by one of them, one of the McNamara boys saying, all wars should end this way. And he means hand-to-hand combat, which is massively impractical yeah. in modern day warfare, isn't it? Uh, what's this, Jacas? Two against seven? You guys don't know when to quit. Even though exactly the same happened at the docks <laughs> and they got their fucking asses handed to them. Yeah, there was only five. There was only five back then. No, oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah so now there's, there's two they've more. Gained. They've gained an them. elderly fucking blind man <laughs> with nunchucks up and his a seventeen-year-old. Anyway, Jake is hit twice and he's fucked. Well, technically, he was hit once, and on his way down, he was hit again. So Jake got hit, punched in the face once, and he's down. And then his right-hand man with the the the, he's like the black guy with the mohawk. He's down after one punch as well. And then slow-mo of them beating up the other six or whatever, the other four. Uh, slow-mo for the rest of the fight. They take everyone out with one kick each yeah. until the elderly trainer. The elderly trainer is left standing. So maybe a fight that lasts more than one kick? What do you reckon? Nah. No? No. Nah. He gets his nunchucks out and it's and it's this old bloke against both of them. Two on one. Uh, it gets kicked once in the stomach and... Uh, flies three foot in the air and lands on the floor, <laughs> gets two punches to the face, and that's literally him done. Quite right. Fuck me. It's got to work, isn't it? Uh, Jake's woken up uh, to take the two girls hostage. It uh, tells him, you'll never take me alive, coppers, or whatever the fuck he says. <laughs> he tells his right-hand man to run off with one of the girlfriends in tow, and he says that uh, he's that she's her his insurance, and if you'll excuse me, I have a plane to catch. It's like... What? What do you mean you've got a plane yeah, to catch? I have no idea where the plane came from, but uh, yeah. I thought these were just like twats. He's got, he's got plans. Twats who just hang around the woods. He's got like, ideas, he's got plans, he's got a future. He's got a plane. He's got a ranch, he's got a horse. <laughs> Cold iron. <laughs> he says, I'll be back with a bigger army, better trained, there'll be a bounty on you. And he says, hate to leave the party early. He's, he's just like reeling yeah, up all like, All right, all right, just go then. <laughs> yeah. Go if you're going. Jesus, he's just really, shut up. He says, don't follow, I'll let her go when I'm safe. And the twin says, how can we trust you? And he says, 
you cunt. Oh no, sorry. He says. <laughs> <laughs> he says you can't. Yeah. <laughs> back off. You know a little pressure take to kill her? Now back off. Carl! Get up here! Move it! Sorry, guys. But you'll never take me alive. She's my insurance. So she comes with me. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I got a plane to catch. I'll be back. With a bigger army. Better trained. There'll be a bounty on you. I'll make bookends out of you. Carl, run ahead and get things started. Sorry to spoil the fun and leave early. Don't fall off. I'll let her go when I'm safe. How can we trust you? You can't. Stop! And through all that as well, we have the other girlfriend on the floor, fake crying, looks ridiculous. Anyway, why the hell is there a fucking plane, Ken? I don't know. It's the it's the people's army, private people's army. They Pe- got they got yeah. planes and shit attached to the people's elbow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and the Judean people's front. <laughs> Uh, there's shots of them running through the trees, and Jake seems to have gotten really far ahead somehow. Like, he only just left, but he's so far ahead, he decides now's the time to rape her. <laughs> now's the time. Let's have a bit of rape, yeah. actually. Now, now that we're away from the the two idiots, let's let's maybe let's do a bit of raping. Yeah. Why not? The twins catch up instantly as soon as he's put her on the floor and call out. He holds her up in front of him as he raises the bow and arrow at him, the, the twin. And uh, this bit is fucking terrible now. <laughs> Fuck me. Jake places his hand on the tree next to him as he's like moving backwards, and the twin apparently shoots, shoots his hand. We get a close-up of Jake's face screaming, and then he pretends to pull the arrow out of his hand again, we never see it, and then runs off into the woods and leaves the girlfriend on the floor. Plus, he's got, like, a knife to her throat. Yeah. So even the pain of having an arrow shot through the other hand would have meant he was able to kill her with the hand with the knife in it. No. Oh, okay. No, okay, absolutely not. not. I'm not a doctor, am I? Well, don't put yourself down too much, Ken. (laughs) Okay, well, I am. (laughs) Is that better? I am a doctor. Uh, he consoles his crying girlfriend for a second and they give chase to Jake, who's climbing into the plane next. And it flies off with Jake saying that he'll get them next time, Gadget. <laughs> next time. He raises the bow to shoot the plane and uh, his brother just just puts it back down again. Yeah. As, as though to say, don't waste your time. And then the two stand there like dickheads as uh, they watch the plane take off. It fades to black, the credits roll, and a kick-ass song plays. Yes, that is literally just the end of the fucking film. Crazy. This is the film that you had us watch. <laughs> Jesus age Christ, That's man. It's not the worst we've ever watched, is it? Come on. Oh, God, it's pretty close. It's just watching some guys have a holiday with their girlfriends <laughs> and then 10 minutes of them beating up some, almost to the point, mentally handicapped gang. Yep. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> yes. So there you go. You're welcome. Welcome to the Twin Dragons. There's a sequel, if anyone's so inclined, and maybe we'll cover it next time. Yeah, maybe for the, we are. 
for the bonus <laughs> episode. Um, uh, it's called Dragon Hunt 1990. Apparently, bigger explosions, slower slow mo, <laughs> more moustache for your buck. Wow, four years between this and that one. Yeah. Wow. What could possibly go wrong? Wow, they must have had some serious input from the studios. <laughs> <laughs> what are your final thoughts on this one, Ken, for a first time viewing? Um, I enjoyed it. Fucking hell. I enjoyed it because it was so shit. It was unbelievable. It's like watching a group of people who've no idea how to make a film uh, make a film. Yeah. And that, that's, that's, that's exactly that, what we watched. And, and yeah. that's it, yeah. Yeah, awful. But fun. But fun. But, but fun. Yeah. Yeah, which was one of my films. <laughs> <laughs> From the good old days. And on that note, we'll bring this episode of the podcast to a close. Thank you to my co-host, Kenby Wild, for recommending this piece of shit. <laughs> Thank you for watching it. Have you guys seen this? It's if on, you have, it's on YouTube. Come on, give it a watch. If you have seen it, what did you think? Did you like it? Let us know. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you want to contact us by email, you can badmoviecourt at gmail dot com. If you want to discuss this episode with other cult members or me and Ken ourselves, you can. You just need to search Bad Movie Court Discussion Group on Facebook. All links will be available in the show notes. If you'd like to support the podcast, simply leave us an Apple Podcast rating or review. You can also do that on Spotify. It's a massive help. It gets us found by new listeners, which is what we want. We want to grow the fan base. Have it. Grow the brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Expand the brand. Expand the brand. That's what we're all about. Expand the brand. You can find all previous episodes as well as written reviews of films not covered on the podcast on our website, www.badmoviecult.com. We will be back in a week's time with another full-length movie review, deep dive, and film pitch right here on the Bad Movie Cult podcast. Ken, you're a bloody idiot for recommending this one. Thank you very much. (laughs) See you next week. (laughs) Hey, you. Apologize for calling me a Mack truck. I drive a back truck. Maybe I'll drive you.